hello guys and welcome i know many of you are coming from tiktok but many of you do not know who i am okay so what you're going to do first of all is to go on tiktok right now type at stone avenue at s t o n e avenue with two e's that's a v e n u e e all right check me out i do short football analysis i do a lot of uh, uh auspicious things to ensure that you guys understand the game of football to his depth to his nitty-gritty and, and get the important information you need to understand to to uh, to be able to explain games and understand what's happening in matches now this this video has been sponsored of course by zing uh their partners for now uh they, they, they deal with savings investment and trading and the truth about this is this when it comes to money money is a very fickle thing it can disappear at any time and you need to save and invest and trade to ensure that your money is kept or else it just goes like that now well, let's get into the video are you with me <laughs> all right so this video we're going to look at the positions in football and we're going to explain it starting from the coaching styles that are can fit into this video there are a lot of them are can fit in a few into this video and of course uh, the position explaining from the goalkeeping position to the strikers and everything. So we're going to start from the goalkeeping, uh, the, the the coaching uh, types of coaching situations. We we'll have the attacking style, which was made popular by a lot of coaches, but of course recently by Hansi Flick. We don't know what Hansi Flick uh, did. In the attacking style of coaching, you attack so much that your opponent doesn't have time to attack you back. So it's not, in other words, attacking is the best way of defending. You get that? So. That's why in the attacking situation, you don't care how many goals they score you. They score you two goals, three goals. That doesn't concern you. You score five or six. So that, that is what Hansi Flick brought. Of course, you have the control. Control is uh, basically made popular by by Jose, uh, sorry, by Pep Guardiola. So you hold the control just like um, uh, Barcelona does. You hold the ball. Now, in the control style, uh, there can be leaks. If they lose the ball, they have to press fast and get the ball back. Or else, uh, it's very easy. Might be very easy to score them. So you remember that uh, match that Isina played against Barcelona, where Pato just pass on pass to play the ball through the Barcelona midfield and defense and scored. So and then you remember Man City when they lose the ball, they have to really press hard and collect the ball back. Or else, it's, it might be easy to really like get them on the counter and score them, like Wolves did uh, a lot of times and all of that. So basically, control uh, was brought in popular by Pep Guardiola. Of course, you have the defensive style of play. There are two kinds of defensive style of play. There's the contained defensive and there's the ultra defensive. The ultra defensive was made popular uh, by a lot of coaches, but of course, this in this uh, era was made popular by Diego Simeone. Now, I'll explain why. Diego Simeone is all about defend the ball, don't concede. And then, however you score is none of my business. You can say, let's go style of play. They don't have a style of play attacking wise. Their style of play is just defend and zero and then get the ball to Carrasco or Suarez to make uh, uh, individual runs or something that would get them the goals. So they, there's, no, there's no plan of attack. There's always a plan for defense. Now, the second type is the contained defensive style, which was made popular by Jose Mourinho. Jose Mourinho only is contained, defend the ball, and then counter. The other guy that plays like this is Nuno. You contain the, 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 the other team and you attack. You counter them. Do you, do you get that? So the, the, that's two different styles. Now let's get into the video because I know some of you are excited. I mean, I'm excited too. You know, I did a lot of research. I wrote down some things, you know, beautiful things. Um, and uh, like I said, make sure you download the Zing app to plan your money, to save, to invest, and to trade. Money comes, money goes. If you don't put it in somewhere, it just disappears. The, the description is in the bio. Just click on it sign up for the app very very simple um brought about by investment one they, they give uh, percentages between four and ten percent uh, uh, depends on how long you keep it and how much it is now let's get into the video goalkeeping positions we have different types of goalkeepers we have the sweepers like manuel Neuer, and the sweepers they usually play in an ultra attacking uh team so if your team is all about attacking you have to have a sweeper because when you're countered the sweeper has to cover up for the CBs and be able to clear the ball. Much that much between Barcelona and Bayern, uh, where Suarez was trying to get the ball from that counter from all, all, all from you know just up there and run out. And Neuer was always there to clear the ball, clear the ball like four, five, six times that match and everything till uh, Messi uh, dribbled, <laughs> Boateng and Gambate fell on the floor and then looped <laughs> Neuer, you know. And then you have the ball playing kind of 
kinds of goalkeepers. You have Edison, and look at what Arsenal wanted. Arsenal wanted the ball playing kind of goalkeeper. They had to bench Leno and put in the other guy all of that. So basically, ball playing goalkeepers, you have to be, you have to know how to dribble and pass. You know, Victor Valdez was so good in ball playing. Victor Valdez will hold the ball confidently. You come to him, you dribble, you cut you and pass the ball. And all of that. Look at Edison, very confident on the ball. Sometimes they make mistakes, but and all of that. Then we have the close range specialist. See, the only guy that comes to my head when I think about the closure special is Victor Valdez. Victor Valdez, you can shoot from outside the box and Valdez will, will, will punch him into his own net. But you see that one-on-one? -on -one? <laughs> Come one-on-one -on -one Valdez. You're joking. You definitely are joking. You're expecting to score Valdez one-on-one. -on -one. That, that's the, like a very big joke. It's really hard to score one-on-one -on -one than from outside the box. This is, I said, that's crazy, right? Well, that was how it was. Then there are short stoppers. People that can stop shots from outside the box. They get and all of that, you know, when you shoot the ball, they are there to punch it. They are also, you have reflexes, you know, you know, in the forward, they are up again. Now, the second, let's go to the, let's go to the next position, of course. This next position are the center backs. Now, there are three types of center backs. We have the sweepers, like Virgil van Dijk. They are the ones that have to have positioning. So the other defender, the other pairing of CB goes out there to mark the ball and to slide and all of that the sweepers are behind waiting for the outcome of that to ensure that they know what to do and they're in the right place to deflect whatever maybe the guy makes a mistake they are there to play it or whatever they, they are sweepers and they usually know when where the other defender should be on the pitch they are directing them robertson go decide and only go decide i just think that that was a weak point of van dyke before that he knows to mark around about it's very intelligent very intelligent cb they will have the ball playing cbs like diaz like ramos like Alaba, they can cross the ball, create attack, all of that. Um, they might not be so perfect defensively, but they're very good attacking. While they can score, they can head, they can pass, uh, they can read, read the play. Uh, they, they have speed and all of that. They're really, really very good, and they're usually very big and all of that. But then we have, of course, the ball stoppers, people that go at the CB pairing that goes out there to defend, to slide, to get stuck in. We have Varane, we have uh, 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 John Stones, and all of that. They go out there. We have Nacho. They want to, you know, go and defend, you know and all of that uh you have Cellini, you know when he wins a, a taco he's shouting yeah. <laughs> so you have all of that of course but what's going to the next position next position are the right and the left back so we have the right full back and the left full back and then the right wing back and the right and the left wing back on the left full back they usually play in the 4-4-2 formation where you have 4-4-2 so there's somebody in front of them either a left midfielder or a, or a winger so they're usually most of the times on the defensive end. They don't have so much responsibility attacking wise, but they can come at uh, come and attack from time to time. But they're not expected to run the length of the field every time. So we have Roberto Carlos as a left full back. We have, uh, of course, Luke Shaw. He's not expected to run every time, but he has more responsibility defensive wise. Uh, okay, then um, the left wing back. We have someone like Chiwell. He's expected to run the length of the pitch, run the length of the pitch, and, and both in attacking and defending. He's supposed to be everywhere. And then, of course, we have uh, the right wing back. We have Rich James. We have Victor Moses. You know that Victor Moses, that time he was like top three best uh, right wing backs in the world. Um, so it's better to attack and it's better to defend and all of that. So th that's, those are the uh, differences. And then we have the DMs. Now, I, I already explained that there are three types of DMs, but I added one. So there are four types of DMs. The first kind of DMs are the deep line playmakers. The deep line playmakers are like Pelo. They are not expected to so much be on the defensive position. They are defensive midfielders, but they are um, they are not uh, very good defensively. They are good with creating chances, crossing the ball to the strikers, playing the ball out there for the strikers to score, uh, passing the ball to the eventual person that will now assist the strikers. So Pelo was not good with all the whole you know uh, sliding like Ndidi does or timing and all of that, but he was good as a deep line playmaker. Then you have traditional DMs like in Didi that uh, look at their game in terms of interceptions, in terms of uh, blocks, in terms of uh, uh, covering the defense so that defense is not, is not easily harmed and easily attacked and all of that, making sure that counters are, are, are neutralized and all of that. So you have that, those are the, those are the traditional DMs. You have the box to box DMs, of course, box to box DMs are, are people like Kante. Golo Kante, so he runs forward, he runs back, you know, and um, it's involved in the attack, involved in the defense. As a box box, the one of the most important things to have is timing because you can't be running from the attack and coming to the defense, and then you don't have the right timing, you slide at the wrong time or something. That's a red card, you gotta count in, or you're coming with two feet and all of that. 
and of course the transitional DMs. Transitional DMs are DMs that can transition from either box to box to deep line playmaker or box to box to traditional DMs or traditional DMs to box to box. Perfect example, of course, is Vidal. Vidal can transition from a box to box to a traditional DM. Uh, Kante can transition from, transition from a box to box to a traditional DM or a traditional DM to a box to box. At times, he just plays like traditional DMs. There are times he plays as a box to box. So he can, it's a transitional. He can transition in the game. Transitional, depending on what is needed at that point. You got that? Okay. <laughs> now let's get into this. We have the center midfielders. Okay. So they are the center midfielders that are based on control, like Xavi. They control the pace of the game. They control how the game is played. Okay, now it's time to be fast and really play fast. In the center midfielder for control, you, the application of control. He's the one that controls it. He ensures that everybody, okay, let's start playing fast passes. Let's start playing short passes. Let's start playing long passes. He controls all that kind of things. Uh, Xavi is a perfect example. Box to box DMs. We have box to box CMs, of course, as center midfielders. Yeah, yeah, two. Yeah, two is to play as a DM in Barcelona. I got to Man City, started playing as a center midfielder. I was effective, man. This guy was, was good, you know. So he is good, and he is a he is a box to box center midfielder. He will be in the attack. He had more goals than than, than Aguero in one season, like that. And then he will be on defense and all of that. So so two is a perfect example. Modric is also a perfect example with box to box CM center midfielder and of course we have the holding midfielder holding midfielder basically is usually um in terms of advantage holding means like i'm holding my foot i'm holding it i'm holding the ball till i pass it to my cm or my winger i am not a dm but i'm holding do you get what i'm saying so it's like it's like it's like an extra midfielder then you're playing like five midfielders an extra to hold like like Mikel. Mikel sometimes to play like that to hold when he, when he plays SL, SL players the game, then he plays at the holding midfielder to hold the ball. So uh, that's the holding midfielder, right? So now on that on that example, um, Bastian Schweinsteiger, of course. And then we have the advanced playmaker as a center midfielder, KDB, uh, requirements, Silva, Iniesta. You have to be tricky. You have to know what you're doing. You have to be intelligent. You have to be uh, not to pass, not to not to score, know when to pass, know when to dribble, know when to hold the ball. You know, they are very, very tricky, they are good in attack, they are not expected to do much defensive wise, but they are very, very excellent and effective attacking wise. That's why those are advanced playmakers as a center midfielder, and also that center midfielder position. You got that still with me, okay? Now, let's talk about the attacking midfielder position or the supporting striker. Now, attacking midfielders are almost going into extinction the position, and the reason why is basically because. The wingers, the out and out wingers that are supposed to be on the wings are now coming into the box to play as supporting strikers. So you have someone like Salah that he has a striker as familiar, but he's coming into the box and he is the highest goal scorer. So what do you need a Mezzo Ozil for that in, in that team for? You don't really need it because Liverpool plays, they eliminate the center, the middle. They play from the from the wings or they play from the back, straight pass up to the to, to, to the wingers. They eliminate their center. Their center is just for defending. Not for creativity. So what, what do you mean? The only thing that Ozil will be there for. They have won the Champions, they have won the Premier League. What do you mean that Ozil there for? So so sometimes because they are winning, they don't need an attacking midfielder. Because these wingers are becoming attacking midfielders, are becoming supporting strikers. You have someone like Cristiano Ronaldo that's supposed to play on the on the left in Real Madrid and it was mostly in the box and, or outside the box and Marcelo had to run that wing to and fro as a wing back, but he was supposed to be a left back. You get that kind of thing. So basically, it's 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 it, 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 the game has transitioned that uh, attacking midfielders like Hamed Rodriguez and Mesut Ozil are losing their position, are losing their spots. Not many teams want them. The big teams are, are like, okay, we have supporting strikers, we have wingers that can play as supporting strikers. We don't really need you and all of that. So basically, that's what it's all about. Uh, so now, um, but an attacking midfielder, you have to have link up play. Link up play is basically you know where the striker is and you know where to pass. Uh, there was a match that Real Madrid played against uh, Barcelona. That Ozil was still in Real Madrid. So Ozil, they gave the ball to Ozil. Ozil's head was down like this. They gave the pass to him, and Ozil passed the ball immediately, and out came Ronaldo. And I was like, what just happened here? Like he knew exactly, instinctively where Ronaldo would be. So that's basically a work of attacking me through that. Link up with the, the attacker, link up with the forward, link up with the striker, knows where they are, can pass the ball, can distribute, um, can dribble when necessary. All right, let's talk about the wingers. That's the next position. We have the inverted wingers, meaning that a guy that has that has a predominantly right foot playing on the left wing, or the guy that has a predominantly left foot playing on the right wing. 
So you cut in, that's what it's called inverted. Usually they used to play people that play with the right foot predominantly on the right wing, and people that used to play with the left foot predominantly on the left wing. But now they invert it, you have Salah on the right wing, uh, usually before they play Salah on the left wing. And then you have, of course, Mani on the right, on the left wing and all of that. So that's the inverted winger, of course. And then you have the left midfielder or the right midfielder. Left wing midfielder are people that um, stay on the, on the left wing, but usually have more defensive responsibilities. They're expected to attack and also run back for defense. So usually uh, they, 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 they are played, uh, they, they usually run the length of the, of the wing. They, they're running forward, they're running back too and all of that. Uh, a perfect example is Mani. Perfect example on the right is Ayuzi Pires of Leicester. He needs to run for attack. He needs to also run back for defense. Um, of course, we have the the wingers, the out and out wingers. The left winger you have Mares. Um, uh, 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 sorry, on the right winger you have Mares. You have uh, uh, on the left normal wingers that stay on the wings. Uh, usually stay on the wings. They are, you do not see them in the box most of, most of of the time. They are playing on the wings. You have Robin. You have Ribery. They play on the wings. Um, and, and so those are the left wingers and the right wingers. And then you have the traditional wingers, people that that are used. That use their left leg playing on the left wing. That people that use their right leg playing on the right wing. Those are the traditional wingers. And then of course you have the supporting strikers like Mosala that's supposed to play on the right wing, but you are inside the box, you know, playing and all of that. Um, so that, those are the types of uh, of wingers. Of course you have Ronaldo too that used to play. They're supposed to play on the left wing in Real Madrid, but you see inside the box so as a supporting striker to Benzema and all of that. And then you have Marcelo running that wing. Um, don't forget to download the Zinc app. Link is in the description below. Download the Zinc app and make sure that your money is budgeted and saved and invested and traded. Don't let that money disappear just like that last one did. Huh? Okay, let's get into this. The next position I'm going to talk about is the false nine position. The false nine is usually playing a midfielder in a striking position so that you have more advantage in a midfield. So the, the false nine guy has to be somebody that is intelligent and that can pass out of uh, of a tight spot so as a false nine you 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 be around the box or inside the box a lot of the times and the, the, the defenders will pay attention to you that means that team have to have midfielders that can score because when the ball comes to you you need to be able to pass out to an iniesta or pass out to a gerald or pass to a lampard that can shoot the ball in the back of the net or have the positioning or yaya to it so you can't play false nine if you don't have the midfielders that can score number one if, you don't, if the guy is not intelligent and knows how to pass or score or dribble at the right time, like Fabregas. You can't play. They don't have to have speed. They just have to be intelligent. And the midfielders just know how to score, basically. Uh, Gadula did that in in that's now with Messi many times, and that worked. Um, of course, we have to also look basically also at the next uh, position, and the next position is the striking position. And um, if you want, you want to look at the striking position, there are different types of strikers. There are the poachers. The poachers are people that have timing and positioning. They don't have skill, they cannot dribble defenders on that. Maybe they dribble once in a while, but they have to have positioning and skill and timing. You have Ines, uh, 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 Zagi, and you have Vanister Roy. They, usually in the box, you usually get a lot of offsides. <laughs> you know, sometimes you get time or well, human beings. They tell you sometimes you get it wrong. But they are they are masters of positioning. <laughs> masters. Just push the boys at the net, you know. Just keep out punch the boys, they are there. You play the boys in the back, they are there. So th those are uh, intelligent approaches. We have center forwards like Drobba, complete center forwards, people that can shoot and hit the ball. Uh, they're crossing the ball, you know that there's a center forward, a guy that is there to score. That's a center forward like Didi Drobba. Then we have target men like Lukaku. The target man has to be big, he plays with the back to the post, and he crosses the ball, he holds, he holds the play, waits for, waits for others to come in, passes the ball out or whatever, but he's a target man. That's target man. He has to be big to be able to withstand defenders like Roman Lukaku. Um, they have out and out finishers like Lewandowski just pass the ball to him and finishes. That's that's his work. And then of course we have complete strikers like Delima. Delima can dribble, Delima can head, Delima can poach. Remember his goal against uh, Germany in, in 2002 World Cup. Oliver can punch the ball and Delima was there to score. So he's a poacher, is everything, he's a complete striker, like one of the greatest strikers to ever play football. And all of that. You get that. Okay, so let's talk about the difference between forwards and strikers. Forwards are Everyone forward. Wingers are forwards. Strikers are forward. Supporting strikers are forward. Attacking midfielders are forward. So Ronaldo is a forward. Messi is a forward. Mbappe is a forward. Neymar is a forward. Uh, Memphis Depay is a forward. Bale is a forward. Vinicius is a forward. Benzema is a forward. Lewandowski is a forward. All of them are forwards. Now, strikers are people in the center that are meant to score. You have Lewandowski, you have Benzema, you have Suarez, you have Vardy. Those are, those are strikers. So that's the difference between a forward 
and a striker. The forward can pass it all. Striker is just the guy in the middle that's there to score. You got that right? <laughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this video into parts. After uploading this this one, I'm going to divide it into parts into different positions that some of you might like. Uh, so just go and click on the position you want and just watch the video. But uh, we're going to get this video to over 100,000 views and all of that because it explains a lot. And um, I hope I've covered everything <laughs> that I, I, I researched and, and wrote down and everything. Um, uh, till next video, you guys should make sure you subscribe on TikTok. Uh, make sure you subscribe on this channel. Make sure you follow me. Thank you for your love. And download the Zing app. There are partners for this video. The link is in the description.